Now that we understand induced EMF, we can talk about an electrical phenomenon that was kind of glossed over previously. This was back in the electrical transmission area, getting electricity from a generation facility, like a hydroelectric dam, all the way to your home. To understand this, we thought about it in terms of transmitting electrical power, where power can be described as P equals IV. I is the current, V is the voltage. Considering this, we know that we can transmit the same amount of power with high voltage and low current, or with low voltage and high current. If we step down the voltage, we increase the current, or vice versa. We do this voltage step up or step down using a transformer. A transformer transforms the voltage to a new value. So why do we even bother transforming voltage? Well, high voltage with low current allows our power transmission to be more efficient. And that's why we use high voltage lines to get power across long distances through fields and forests and such. But as the power gets closer to town, this high voltage is unsafe. We can't have 100,000 volts mixing with lots of people and ladders and cranes and car crashes, etc. It's just too much potential for an arc, causing fires or deaths. So, as we get closer to our towns or cities, we trade in some of our efficiency. That is, we keep the same power, but we step down the voltage and increase the current. It's not as efficient, true, but it's much more safe. For example, here's an electrical substation on the edge of a town. It steps down the voltage before continuing its travel within the town. Then, before the power goes into your house, the voltage is dropped again to 120 and 240 volts, just to keep things even safer as it enters our immediate domain. Again, we're trading in some efficiency for increased safety. If your power is delivered above the ground on wires, the transformer might look like this. If the power is delivered to your house below the ground, the transformer might look like this. Now that the power is within your home, you'll still find some situations that require transformers. You have them in your house. For example, your microwave will require somewhere around 2,000 volts to run properly. So you need to step up the voltage for that one. And also, charging your phone only requires, say, 9 volts. So you need to step down the voltage for that. So, as you can see, a big part of electrical power transmission and regular daily use of electricity requires transformers. So how does a transformer work? Well, let's take a look. Every transformer has incoming lines, and we call that the primary side. And the outgoing lines are known as the secondary side. Often, the secondary side will have a different voltage than the primary side, which is quite often the use of our transformer, transforming the voltage. And within the transformer, the incoming wires are coiled around a conductive core. And so, as we remember, the current in each of these wires creates a magnetic field around them. Thinking, right hand rule, and with a bunch of windings, the magnetic field in the core is built up, and there's our electromagnet. That's step one in making a transformer. Next, let's extend this core, and we'll make a loop with it, and we have a continuous magnetic field within this core now. The continuous magnetic field. Well, that's step two in making a transformer. Now, we can wrap our outgoing lines, or secondary wires, in coils around the other side of the core. And that's step three. We have a transformer. Now, if we hook up a battery to the primary side of our transformer, let's see what would happen. First, our current will run through the coils. Perfect. And then our right-hand rule tells us that we've created a magnetic field within the core. Nice, an electromagnet. So we put a multimeter on the secondary side and nothing. Our transformer doesn't work. Dang, well, let's analyze this. 
On the primary side, a moving current creates a magnetic field. Check. On the secondary side, we have a magnetic field going through the core here. Shouldn't that create a current? Well, we recall that a magnetic field within loops like this can be called flux, and flux itself creates nothing. We require a change in flux to induce an EMF here, remember? And currently, with this battery, we have flux but no change in flux. So how do we create a change in flux? Well, there's no easy way to change the area of the coil, so stopping there, what if we could change the magnetic field? Thinking backwards, if we could change the current in the primary side, then the induced magnetic field would change, and we would have a changing flux. Well, we can't regularly change the current with a battery here, maybe unhooking it and hooking it up and we get a little blip, but that's not very practical. But what if we hooked up the primary side to an AC power supply? Remember, AC, alternating current. And this means that the current is constantly changing. It's flowing one way and then the other and back and forth. And with our right-hand rule again, this means that the magnetic field is shifting back and forth as well. So we have regularly changing flux. And with changing flux, that means we have induced EMF on our secondary side. And suddenly our transformer works great. We need to have an AC voltage on the primary side. And the result will be an AC voltage on the secondary side. So this device we've created here is called an isolation transformer. It effectively connects two circuits supplying power from the first to the second without any wires being connected between the circuits. And this phenomenon allows us to pass power from one circuit to another via magnetic field lines. The circuits are electrically isolated even though the power is being transferred. Ever wonder how wireless charging works for phones? Well, now you know the principle behind that. In our next tutorial, We'll talk about how to adjust the number of coils in the primary and or secondary side to change the actual voltage with our transformer.